everyone, Andrew here, and welcome to today's video where, you know, I've seen a lot of talk recently about new consoles coming out, the future of gaming, and it's made me think that I, as well, should probably get something that really kind of puts me on the cutting edge of where gaming is going, and that's why I decided to grab the N-Gage. I figured a phone and a gaming console in one, you can't get much more advanced than that. Uh, and yeah, I've heard all sorts of incredible things about it. It came out in 2003, so it's a little old at this point, but I figured, you know, with a cool name like that, all this like, sleek design, it has to still be one of the greatest consoles out there, right? Well, we're going to be opening this up, taking a look at it, and even, you know, trying out some games and such, so let's get to it. This is my look at the N-Gage. All right, so here we are with the N-Gage box. It's pretty basic on the front, doesn't even give you a preview of what the console looks like or anything like that. Uh, it does say that the SIM card is enclosed. The top here gives us a preview of what some of the games might look like. You have a variety of things like Sonic, which is you know mainly 2D, to some other games like Tony Hawk and Tomb Raider, which are actually more 3D, so you know, like their PlayStation counterparts. Flipping around to the back, you get an overview. I guess that's where you know your preview of the console actually is. You just have to put that effort into turning the box around. Uh, it kind of tells you what's going on. And of course, you get English and French because this is the Canadian version of the box. Uh, but with that said, uh, without you know further ado, stop looking at the front and open it up. Where this is what you get. Uh, unlike some things back in the day, which would have been like styrofoam or maybe more of a cardboard tray, here you actually get more of a plastic tray which is pretty weird. And the first thing you're gonna see is your N-Gage uh, stuck inside kind of this slot in the top. But what you really wanna do is flip this open and there's a whole bunch of goodies hidden inside of here, including this cardboard box, which uh, says, you know, your starter kit, software and guides. So we're gonna have a quick peek inside what you would get inside here. There's gonna be kind of a lot of tangents here. We're like, we're looking at one thing and then we have to switch over to looking at another thing. Let's move that back. I believe that should be everything. And inside here, you get this quick start guide. So this folds open and explains all of your controls and such. I'll just put these on screen briefly uh, for a couple of seconds. So if you really want to read them, you can pause. And yeah, this kind of gives us you know the lowdown on what we can expect from our console. Anyone who has a look at this one for a second might immediately realize uh, one of the major flaws with this game console, uh, as we'll be seeing momentarily. Uh, here we have the same thing once again, but en français version. Here we actually get a CD with a whole bunch of software and stuff on it. So uh, when you hook your N-Gage up to your computer, I suppose you can use that. And this piece of cardboard here, which is like warranty information, don't throw this out, and all that jazz. And this right here, I'm guessing this would probably be different depending on where you bought your N-Gage. Mine against Canadian, so uh, Rogers, a big telecommunications company up here. I think that maybe originally your uh, SIM card would have been included in here or such, but it talks all about uh, you know getting your service set up so that you can use the cell phone functionality of your N-Gage. Once again though, opening up this plastic cover, uh, we get some other things. We get the obligatory headphones that like every single electronic device used to include back in the day. Now these days things don't even include headphone ports, which is kind of sad. Here you have your USB cable for connecting to your computer. Here you get your battery, which is actually not like included inside of the console by default. It's something separate that you have to insert, so uh, we'll be taking that out. And here uh, you get your charger. So basically, uh, when you put the battery inside the console, you can then connect this console to a wall outlet and charge it that way. Uh, you also get some, some other cords and such here, I think, for maybe hooking it up to, yeah, just other things. Uh, so there we go. So put those back in here put this off to the side and again so now we have our battery so we have to take our console here and here we have it our first look at the Nokia N-Gage uh, we do have a piece of tape here and that's not because there's anything wrong with it actually but rather when it come uh, when it came brand new uh, there was kind of like a plastic protective piece that went over the screen. Uh, a lot of electronics had that. You can usually just peel it off. Uh, the previous owner, I guess, didn't want that coming off, so they put this piece of tape there to keep it all in place. I don't play the N-Gage that much, so it hasn't really bothered me. Uh, so I just leave it there, and hopefully it'll be okay for this review. Otherwise, you now finally have your first look at, you know, the uh, D-pad and such on the left, and all your numbers and stuff on the right. The 7 and 5 actually are a bit uh, more of a bump than the other numbers, because these replicate your B and A buttons when playing games, just as you would have on your uh, Game Boy Advance. Uh, power button on the left, uh, ports and such for plugging things on, on the, rather, sorry, power button on the right. 
uh, things on the left for you know, plugging in. And we need to then press down on this button on the back and we can slide this back panel off, which gives us access to uh, what we need to see back here, where we need to put the battery, the game cartridge, and the SIM card is already inserted. And again, just as I was alluding to when we were looking at the quick start guide, this is where one of the major flaws of this console comes to light. So here's another one of those tangents, where now we have to look at the games. This is what your typical N-Gage game looks like. Came in a, a nice plastic case like this. Uh, here is Sonic N, which is just the N-Gage equivalent of Sonic Advance. You can tell because the art is pretty much exactly the same. And popping this open, we get our instruction manual on the left and our game on the right, along with like plastic cases and stuff that we can use to carry our game around. A lot of kind of just, you know, things that aren't really necessary when all we're really looking at is the game here. You need to kind of awkwardly get this out, pull back one of these tabs, uh, and it releases the game. Put the case off to the side, and as you can see, games are very SD card shaped. Uh, pretty much the same size as an SD card, and yes, this is all you need to put into your N-Gage to play the games. But again, here is the problem, and you'll notice this. First, let's put the game in, and the game inserts right here. But there's these two tabs that you have to slide the, the game card under, or else you won't be able to put it in. So you need to kind of start way back here, and slide it towards this corner, underneath those two tabs, and click it into place. So now the game is inserted. But now we have to insert the battery. So obviously these three prongs here meet these three prongs, so we're going to push that in. And now the battery is in. But what you're going to realize is, if you want to take this game out, it means that every time you want to change games, you have to take the back cover off, remove the battery, and then remove the game, and then put the game in, put the battery in, put the back cover in. It's not an easy job. You know, it's not exactly fun every time you want to switch games, uh, clear, clear your daily schedule, you know, if it's a thing that you want to do. So, uh, for a console that was supposed to be half cell phone, half game, it really seems like they didn't put too much thought into, you know, just how silly it is to have to change games when you want to. So, let's put this cover back on. I think we just slide it on like that. And there you go. We are now ready to try our N-Gage. Let's hold that button on the side for a second. And there you go, the screen is backlit. It's actually very nice. And what you're gonna notice about this, of course, you know, uh, Nokia, mainly a phone company, is that the screen is very vertical. What you would expect from phones back around 2003. You had a lot of flip phones and such, uh, where, you know, the phone would flip open, the screen was pretty vertical, and you have the numbers and such underneath, where on the N-Gage, rather, you still have that vertical screen, but the numbers have now been relegated to the right side, where you get some uh, other options and such on the left. So, I set the time. Uh, so basically, the general select button, like, you know, just the OK button, is just to push this down. Uh, you know, the D-pad can actually be pressed in, and that's how we now get to our main menu here, which again, looks very much like what you would expect from a phone menu. Uh, we have some options here, like obviously music player. Uh, it wants us to connect our headset. We have radio, and we just have a general menu here. Let's say, how do we get out of all this? General menu button, which brings us to a whole bunch of different options like telephone, which you can then use to call people. But of course, we don't have this SIM card set up and don't have any service. So we're not going to focus too much on all these other functions like messaging. You can send somebody a text message. And in order to enter that, you'd have to like, you know, press these buttons or something like that. Uh, I didn't actually own my very uh, my first phone until 2013, so I missed a lot of these ages of the phone. Personally, I don't think it was that important to own a phone back then, but it was kind of the cool thing to do. But if you want to play the games, now we go back to this menu. And as you can see, we put Sonic N in there, so we can now select that. And here we go. And kind of a boot up screen. And as again, you're gonna see, the screen's very vertical. Compare this to like a Game Boy Advance and how horizontal that screen is. And yeah, the sound quality is not good. And again, Sonic N is essentially like uh, Sonic Advance. So again, seven is like B, five is like A, and let's go. And it's a little laggy, and it's just like, yeah, this is not the gaming machine that they made it out to be. Like, I like how, again, because the screen's vertical, you get these blue bars along the top, and the screen is just so tiny. I mean, I'm zooming in, like, as far as the screen as I can, uh, and it, it just still doesn't look that great. And again, the sound doesn't sound overly that amazing, but again, 5 is like A, 
Uh, seven is like B. And does it feel good to play? Absolutely not. <laughs> I remember back in the days going to like GameStop and uh, again, you know, the DS came out not too long after and they would have a station set up to test the test the N gauge and one to test the Nintendo DS. And you can guess which system was the one that people actually cared about. Let's compare this to what it looks like on the Game Boy Advance. All right, you tell me which one looks better. Like, look at the screen size that you get on the Game Boy Advance compared to the Nokia N-Gage. And obviously your controls are just so much better on the Game Boy Advance. If you're playing on the SP or if you're playing it on your uh, Nintendo DS, you get that backlit screen. It's interesting that the N-Gage, the screen actually, you know, dims if you don't touch it for a couple of seconds. So you know, that's a feature you see a lot more these days, but this, wow, what a difference. And especially like this is the sound quality. And let's put this one up. Probably can't really tell too much on the camera, but wow, it sounds so much better on the Game Boy Advance SP. But yeah, there's a comparison right there. So, of course, right now we're comparing a game that's available on both consoles, which maybe isn't a little bit fair. So next, let's look at a game that is only on the Nokia N-Gage, or rather, it's on some other consoles as well. Actually, it's probably also on the Game Boy Advance, but the version on the Nokia N-Gage is different. So let's do that. So one thing I should also mention, I guess, is that if you pause, which I guess this is kind of like the relegated pause button, you can quit, and you can actually exit the game from the uh, title screen, which I guess is something you can't really do from a Game Boy Advance game, so totally worth buying the Nokia N-Gage, just so you can experience exiting from a game from the menu. Uh, so now what you want to do, of course, is to switch a game. I guess we want to turn the console off, so you press this button on the side, and then again, you have to switch the console all the way off. So you do that by pressing this button here. Since it, like you literally have to take the battery out to do this, and then yeah, uh, we're gonna be changing games. We're gonna be changing over to, uh, yeah, we're gonna be changing over to knock the box over, Andrew. That's exactly what I meant to do. Uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, where it looks a lot more like the PlayStation version than it does, you know, Game Boy Advance. I don't know if it had the first Tony Hawk. It at least had the second one, where it was much more of a 2D game. But this one, you know, tries to be more like a PlayStation game and actually be 3D. And opening it up, as you can see, unfortunately no manual here, but I actually have the not for resale version of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Not sure if there's like a market for those in terms of N-Gage games. Not sure why it comes in a normal case, yet it's the not for resale version. But uh, that's what we're going to be trying out next. So let's put that in. Uh, and it's going to be, you know, as I have explained, a bit of a process to do that because you have to literally take like everything out. It's crazy, but here we go. So back in the day, the Nokia N-Gage launched for 299 US dollars. So compare that to the price you would pay for a phone anyway. Like, is it worth it then to get something that has some gaming functionality, even if it's not, like, you know, the most amazing game functionality ever? And you have to set the time every single time you take that battery out. So every single time that you, you know, want to change games, get prepared for all this sort of uh, stuff going on. So let's get into the menu now. And we should have Tony Hawk's Pro Skater as an option. And let's boot that up. And I said, let's... Oh, okay. There we go. Just didn't want to boot the first time, I guess. Now, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater games are fantastic. I followed it, like, all the way up to number four. I played uh, Underground, too, but I think four is definitely, like, the peak of the series. They were fantastic games, and here we go. So far, it sounds just like the, the PlayStation one. Let's just get through all the menus here. Of course, go to the warehouse. And, uh, of course, the, the point of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater is you have all these kind of objectives, and you want to complete them, and in the first game you unlock tapes for doing so, and then as you get tapes, you unlock new levels and such. Uh, I can imagine this is probably going to be kind of strange, again, to play this on the end gauge. I wonder, you know, are there more buttons available than just these two? Because PlayStation Tony Hawk uses, you know, a lot more buttons than just that. But as you can see, it's actually like a 3D game, so... Wow, it's very loud, too. Real loud. Yeah, I'm not going to be very good at playing this on the uh, on the end gauge, but I think it's really cool. So, you know, this did come out before the Nintendo DS, so I guess this could be your first taste of actual 3D gaming on the go. Of course, the DS will come out a few years later, and well, never had Tony Hawk. It obviously did have, you know, a lot of games that were pretty good, and yeah, just what controls. Okay, so you actually use two here as, like, the triangle button. That's kind of cool. And yeah, I think it's neat that the end gauge can actually handle 3D games, even if the, the screen is 
very, very vertical. But yeah, so I think that's, uh, you know, we press this, it's like the pause menu. Let's end our run. So again, I think that this is pretty cool. I think it's neat that if back in the day someone had given me, uh, given me this and said, you can play Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 just as you can on the Nintendo 64 or the PlayStation 1 anywhere, I would be pretty impressed with that. Uh, definitely more so than I was impressed with Sonic N, because again, uh, it's essentially the exact same game. It is on the Game Boy Advance, just you know, watered down. But this is actually kind of cool, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but overall, the N-Gage does have some problems, and I hope you've enjoyed looking at the console, and I think that we've reached a point where we're going to wrap things up. So at some point, Nokia realized they screwed up, where they made this device that was supposed to be a phone and a gaming console in one, and yet it seemed like so many of the gaming components were such an afterthought, like how you put the games in and such. So they actually released about a year later the N-Gage QD, which really meant to kind of put those uh, gaming functionalities at the forefront, making it much easier for you to put the cartridge in and redesigning the front and such, so I guess it's, you know, it feels a little bit more like you're holding a game console. Still doesn't help it, obviously, though. The N-Gage still failed hilariously, and uh, we're not going to be unboxing this one, though. Uh, I just thought I would point that out, because, yeah, the N-Gage is all around such a bizarre thing. Nokia... Just who knows what they were thinking. Eventually, they kind of just started putting games on their normal phones. Uh, but it will always be remembered as kind of that weird part of history where cell phones and gaming collided. Uh, but they were railroaded over by the Game Boy Advance and Nintendo DS, just like all portable console competitors were. So thanks for watching this. I hope you enjoyed that unboxing and review. Hope to see you next time for something different. So thanks and see you later. Thank you so much once again for checking out my videos, I really appreciate it, and if you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like and subscribing as it really helps my channel out. With that said, hope to see you next time.